Since her humble beginnings vlogging about dropping out of high school, Emma Chamberlain has since gone on to amass a whopping 12 million YouTube subscribers, start her own coffee company, launch a podcast, grace the cover of Vogue, collaborate with luxury brands like Louis Vuitton and Cartier, and even host coveted red carpet events like the Met Gala. There is no question that Emma Chamberlain is one of the most beloved it girls and everyone's parasocial bestie. So today I'm gonna live my best Emma Chamberlain inspired life and follow everything that she eats in a day. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I'll be eating like YouTuber turned Gen Z it girl, Emma Chamberlain. But of course, not quite because my needs are unique. So I'm gonna be using her alleged meals as a template for teaching gentle nutrition and inspiring what I make that works for my body and me. Also a reminder that this diet was compiled from some primary and secondary sources, so I really can't speak to its legitimacy or accuracy right now. Also a reminder that this is just what I ate on a random day and is not meant to be copied or recommended as how you should eat. So always speak to a registered dietitian about your unique needs. Let me hop in here to chat about today's sponsor, Fetch. So these past few years have been financially challenging for a lot of us. I mean, have you guys seen the cost of lettuce? It is out of control. So I'm all for finding little ways to save wherever I can. So Fetch is a super easy to use free app that lets you instantly earn rewards on anything you buy. Like literally anything. Amazon purchases, restaurants, retail stores, you name it. You're not limited to a certain list of random participating stores that you never shop at. So basically after you buy anything, you just snap your receipt or e-receipt on your phone, which literally takes seconds to do, and then you earn points for everything that you buy. And those points can be saved and then redeemed for things that you actually want. It's not like you get a free sample of toothpaste or a food that you will never eat. You can get gift cards from places that you shop often, like Starbucks, Amazon, Walmart, or Visa. It's obviously really nice to get good free stuff that you need for just buying whatever you're already gonna buy. So if you want to try out Fetch for yourself, check out my link in the description and use my code ABBYFETCH to get 5,000 points when you snap your first receipt. Abby, get that coffee brewing. Okay, so Emma is well known for her love of coffee, which obviously you guys know I'm aligned with. So I'll usually make a latte and I take two shots of espresso, put some vanilla almond milk in it, and then I put vanilla nut pod creamer in it. Considering Emma owns her own coffee company, I knew her coffee order would not disappoint. So I have remade her vanilla almond milk latte here. And I know she adds a little almond creamer. We don't have a ton of options in Canada for non-dairy creamers, but this is what we got. It is super sweet. So I'm just gonna like add a tinch, a tinch. Tinch is the official measurement. Let's see. It's good. So Emma has her coffee first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, which in wellness culture world online is like a big no-no. Abby, can you walk us through this? You got it, girl. So we hear from a lot of wellness influencers that drinking coffee first thing in the morning on an empty stomach will increase your cortisol levels, AKA your stress hormone, which is already naturally highest in the morning. And while there is some truth to this, we also know that any effect that caffeine appears to have on cortisol levels diminishes with regular intake. In other words, if you've already built a habit of drinking coffee first thing in the morning, your body will adapt and not interpret your double-double as like a life or death fight or flight situation. As for drinking coffee on an empty stomach, we don't have any evidence this will exacerbate this result, though theoretically it may help to have like a food buffer on board. The bigger issue is that because coffee is a stimulant, it can cause digestive distress in sensitive folks. And again, pairing it with something may help to reduce this effect. And for other some cream or milk is more than enough. Everyone's tolerance and reactions will differ. All right, I'm glad we sorted that out. Let's take a look at what we are having for breakfast. Breakfast almost every single day is two fried eggs, two over hard eggs, salt on it, pepper on it, 
everything but the bagel seasoning on it. And then I put some Cholula on that. And then I cut up a whole avocado, put that on top and then I eat it, and that's my breakfast every day. So Emma's go-to avocado toast has already made its rounds here on my channel. I actually taste tested it when I made a bunch of YouTubers different kind of like iconic go-to breakfasts, and it was really good. So I'm not disappointed when we're making it again. Plus, let's be real, avocado toast with some fried eggs on top are like a tried and true hunger crushing combo. I don't really care if this breakfast seems like very 2018, I am here for it. Let's get cooking. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter for flavor. Eggs just like scream for butter in my opinion. This one is like significantly bigger than this one. Okay, maybe not significantly, but I'm always gonna go big or go home. Yes. I always feel like when we film this birdie, I just get nervous and then I break the yolk. So, she good. Mm -mm -mm. This is so awkward to crack on. I don't know what I'm doing. I overthink these things when the camera comes out and I like forget how to cook a f egg. This, is that a shell? Possibly, but who's gonna notice when we've got some spices on top? Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? A little fresh cracked pepper. We're gonna do the fancy salt today. So why not? If I'm making breakfast on a weekday, I'm gonna bust out some fancy salt. Mm. Smells good. Right. Gotta feel the goods. Feel like the right one's it. I can feel it. Avocado power just pulsing through my veins. Don't let me down. Oh. She's green, but what the f kind of avocado is that? Oh, that is disappointment. A big ass pit. The pit works in mysterious ways. All right, so it's gonna be one and a half avocados in this recipe. Oh, and this one, oh no. Nope, not that one. All right, let's try this again, because this feels good. Nice, small but mighty. Okay, let's get the toast down. All right, let's scrape up this disappointing example of a fucking avocado. You. See, like, it's going to need a lot. You know what? I doubted this avocado. I doubted it, but she covered her bases. First things first, salt. Second thing second, everything but the bagel seasoning. Third things third is our girl Emma loves Cholula. So I'll do a little Cholula, but I wanna show you my little twisty twist here because this is how I really have discovered that I love avocado toast. Little Cholula. Don't worry, I'm gonna add more heat in just a hot minute. And everything but the bagel with Mike's hot honey. Oh my goodness, folks. It's gonna blow your mind. Okay. That, that, that. Hey guys, aren't you proud for Christmas this year? I got a plastic flipper. So now no one has to harass me in the comments every single time I use a metal spatula on nonstick, which I know is offensive. So I do apologize for it. This is how I like it. This is how I like an egg. Perfect ooey gooey yolk, crispy, crunchy, edges, fried in butter, and I need a little fruit action in here. So we'll throw down a few berries just to round everything out. Mm. Mm, mango. Mm. Mm. I'm excited. I just readjust a few things, folks. We give her a poke. Mm. Here. 
Mmm. It is so good. Mmm. And super duper well balanced. Mm. We got fiber rich carbs in our sourdough and our fruit, lots of healthy fats in the avocado plus the egg, and of course, some really great high quality protein in that egg as well. Hello. Mm. So our girl Emma is an avid runner and she'll often now vlog about her running routine and training for a marathon. Now, thankfully, the double shot of espresso is giving me cardio energy, but your girl has had two kids. So I'm gonna do what my pelvic floor will allow me to do. Wish me luck. Consider me Miles Davis. Oh! All right, got some good movement in. Now it's time for lunch. So back when I reviewed Emma's Harper's Bazaar video, she basically said that she was just not much of a cook and usually she would just like Postmates in some lunch. But if you are watching her channel or following her on social media, you now know that she has taken up cooking and she's been experimenting in the kitchen and trying to have fun with it to the point that is now something that she actually really enjoys doing. At least she makes it seem like that. But yeah, she has a bunch of videos on her channel where she's trying out new delicious looking recipes. So I thought we'd put one to the test and make some tempeh fresh rolls. Let's get some ingredients. Okay, I love a good rice paper wrap because I feel like it is just a vessel for so many delicious ingredients. And it's giving me a good reason to use up any little bits and pieces that I found in my fridge. So we have some uh, cabbage slaw, some uh, sweet peas, bell pepper, carrots, avocado. I've got these millet and brown rice ramen and some tempeh as well as some sesame seeds. So we're going to get this in the bath. Give it a good rub down until it's just pliable but not too sticky, like a delicate balance. Spread this out onto my cutting board. I'm gonna add some noodles, some tempeh, veggies. Avocado. and some sesame seeds. All right, this is not my forte, but we're gonna give it a go. In, in. Oh, I should have probably, whatever. <clears throat> Don't judge me. Oh, God, I'm out of practice. All right, well. The next one will be better. Well, I work to remedy this situation. Abby, can we go over the tempeh thing? On it. So we know that Emma is a vegetarian, which explains why she leans towards more vegetarian proteins like eggs, tofu, beans, and tempeh. Now, tempeh tends to be a bit of an underrated plant protein, but it actually packs quite the nutritious punch. In fact, three ounces of tempeh contains 60% more protein than the same amount of tofu. It also contains calcium and iron, which are essential nutrients for a vegan or vegetarian diet. On top of that, since tempeh is a fermented soybean product, it is also rich in probiotics, making it beneficial for digestive health. Tempeh is also considered a complete protein, meaning that it contains all essential amino acids. But while we're here, it's worth mentioning that the common misconception about plant-based diets is that they don't don't provide enough protein or are missing essential amino acids. However, there's actually very little evidence of protein deficiency in vegans and vegetarians as long as they A, are eating enough calories and B, eat enough food variety. And while a lot of plant-based protein sources are missing or are low in one or more essential amino acids, when you get a variety of protein sources, 
it does fill in those gaps. So for example, peanut butter is low in methionine and bread is low in lysine. So think of it like having a piece of paper with a hole in it and then another piece with the hole in a completely different place. When you layer them on top, you've effectively filled in those gaps. So yeah, eat the rainbow and you'll be good. Abby, back at you. You can't have fresh rolls without a little dip. So we're gonna do some peanut sauce. And I'm totally gonna freestyle this. Big glug of peanut butter, a little splash of rice wine vinegar, little soy, ginger, just a titch, garlic, I'm going to add hot honey, which kind of doubles from the sweetness and the spice. And we need something like milk experience. I only have vanilla. One second. Just a little almond milk to thin it out. Let's hope this will blend. Let's see what happens when I blend them. Usually when I freestyle a recipe like this in a small portion, what ends up happening is I try it so many times until it's just non-existent. So, and I like lime. This will make it better. Mmm, much better. Okay, so I need to work on my rolling technique, but I think they look pretty good. So we've got protein in the tempeh, healthy fats in the nut butter and the avocado, carbs in our noodles, and lots of fiber rich veg. This one's nice and tight. Yeah! yeah. A dip, a dip, a dip, just the tip. Mmm. Mmm, that is so good. The peanut sauce is key. Mm. All right, so it's around 3 p.m. and I feel like your girl could use a snack. So let's take a look at some options. I'm a big snacker. My favorite snack for the past year has been these flax crackers. They're called Mary's Gone Crackers. They're like flax seed, other seed, who knows what's in it. Bunch of seeds in a cracker. And they taste so good. And I eat those with spicy hummus. Um, another snack is I make little mini cauliflower pizzas because I found these little cauliflower thins and I just put a little bit of marinara sauce on it, a little bit of pesto, a little bit of vegan mozzarella. Um, sometimes I'll chop up a little veggie Italian sausage, put that on there, maybe some green olives, bake that for a little bit, put some nutritional yeast on that, take a jar of peanut butter or take a jar of almond butter, like any jar of nut butter I can find, and I'll just take a spoonful of it and eat that. Amazing, love the variety, and I like that we have a good range between like super quick, easy, convenient snacks and a little bit more kind of meal prepped snacks. And while I also love me some Mary's Gone Crackers and hummus, I feel like we're on an Emma recipe kick, so I'm gonna take a stab at her kind of like cauliflower pizza situation. I'm gonna go find my nooch and get things going. Me again. So you may have noticed that nutritional yeast is a very popular staple amongst plant-based dieters, and for good reason. It can be difficult to get enough vitamin B12 on a vegan diet since most sources come from animal products. However, just two teaspoons of fortified nutritional yeast provide more than 300% of the daily recommendation for vitamin B12. Not to mention, it's also a complete protein, meaning it contains all nine essential amino acids. And let's be real, regardless of the nutritional benefits, the stuff tastes so good, especially if you love like a cheesy, nutty flavor. Okay, so Emma uses like a cauliflower kind of pizza crust situation, which I'm not usually super jazzed about, but we're gonna give it a try. So my little tip when I'm making pizza, and I don't have access to like a pizza oven, obviously, um, is I I preheat my pan in the oven just for a few minutes while it's warming up. It definitely helps to get the bottom nice and crispy. We're gonna do mm, a little marinara. Then I've got a little sundry tomato pesto. Just gonna add a lot of really yummy flavor plus some healthy fats. I'm gonna slice up some Kalamata olives. 
lots of mozzarella cheese, and our nooch. Mm. This is going into a 450 degree oven until the cheese melts and that crust gets golden brown. If cauliflower crust browns, I don't know, we're gonna see. One eternity later. So this legit looks delicious. This could be a little snack or could totally be a base for a really delicious meal. And the crust actually held up pretty nicely and I think it's because of my little hack. Look at that. We've got fiber in the crust. We got healthy fats in our olives, plus some protein in our nooch. Mmm. Mmm. That's surprisingly really good. It is officially dinner time and your girl is hungry. Emma, give me something good. But there's something I've been wanting to make since I started my new cooking journey about a week ago. I'll show you the photo. They're called Buddha bowls, but I actually like tofu, although it gives me terrible gas. It looks pretty impressive. I love a good nourish bowl. I think it's just a really easy way to use up any leftover bits and pieces that we have in the fridge, which has kind of been the theme of today because we kind of did that for lunch with the rice paper rolls as well. But I thought it was interesting that Emma mentioned experiencing a lot of gas and bloating from tofu. Abby, can you elaborate on this for us? So tofu is made from soybeans, which contain oligosaccharides, which are a FODMAP. However, even though tofu is technically a low FODMAP food, tolerance is high individualized and will also depend on the amount and type of tofu consumed. So for example, silken tofu tends to be higher in oligosaccharides compared to extra firm tofu. We also know that pressing the moisture from the tofu can also be an effective way to lower the amount of oligosaccharides it contains. So it's possible that she can tolerate some firm tofu and some tempeh, which is actually lower in oligosaccharides because of the fermentation process. All that said, if you're vegan, vegan or vegetarian and your protein sources are limited and you want to continue to eat tofu or other soy based products without experiencing gas, then you can always opt for taking a supplement like Bino before a meal, which is a digestive enzyme that specifically helps to digest foods containing those oligosaccharides. Okay, I am super excited about this. I popped some broccoli, cauliflower, sweet potatoes, and tofu onto the same baking sheet with a little bit of olive oil and some nutritional yeast, salt, and pepper. Super simple, we gotta keep it easy. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of lemon juice here onto some kale and some olive oil. And we need some salt. All right, a little bit of a rub down here. You gotta massage kale. You gotta give it some love to break down some of those really tough fibers. Cause if you have IBS or just like a really sensitive tummy, as I do, kale can be a little rough on the old bowels, if you know what I mean. So this takes 30 seconds out of your day and it'll save you at least 30 minutes of agony. Done. All right, let's get our veg. All right. Da 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 da. No idea why I sang that. So I feel like most of these nourish bowls have quinoa as the base, but spoiler alert, I hate quinoa. So I much prefer sweet potato. We've got all the goods. Get in here. That's a really nice base. And I like the sweetness from a sweet potato as well. Next, we're gonna do a little dressing here. A little sauce action. Okay, we got some tahini. Lemon, a little maple, and just to thin it out a little bit, my water. Gotta stay hydrated. All right, I've got this last little half of avocado. Might as well use her up, because you know it's not gonna last till tomorrow. Right here some sesame seeds. This is a nourish bowl I can get behind. We've got lots of protein in our tofu, healthy fats in the tahini and the sesame seeds and avocado, lots of fiber in our veg, plus some carb action in the sweet potatoes. And honestly, it looks delicious. Mm. The sauce, mm. yes please.
All right, the day would not be complete without my beloved bedtime snack. And I know that our girl Emma loves her fruit. So let's take a look at what some of her options are. Or plums, like when plums are in season, I can just shove down like 10 of those. You guys. Okay, so plums are well out of season. So out of season berries are gonna have to do. And I don't think we've had anything sweet today, so I'm gonna upgrade these with a little chocolate as I did on my TikTok a little while back. So let me show what I'm gonna do. I've melted some chocolate chips here. Hello. I mean, this is all we really need, right? Gonna throw in some bloops. Hey, wait, you swore! Trust me. Some hemp hearts, sliced almonds, and let's give her a stir. And I just put these into like little clumps. We're gonna pop this into a fridge or freezer just to set up for a few minutes and then we'll have our snack. Okay, so I fully acknowledge that these look like turds, but they taste delicious. I'm just adding a little sprinkle of fleur de sel because I feel like that's gonna just take it up a notch. Trust me, these are so delicious. Plus they've got fiber in our berries, plus healthy fats, protein, and fiber in the hemp hearts and nuts. Mmm. Juicy and crunchy. Mm. So good. And I think that's a wrap on eating like our girl Emma. And I gotta say, it feels like a pretty good day. I got lots of new plant-based recipe inspiration, got a lot of different variety in the day, and I got to have my chocolate. So if Emma decides she wants to zone in on the food content, I am here for it. And on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like to see me attempt next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.